begging for a living. <coughs> so as Jesus and his disciples together with a large crowd were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. This man was in dire straits. He needed help. And help was on the way. His eyes may not have seen, but his ears worked very well. He could tell some commotion was going on, and the little inquiry soon found out that it was this Jesus of Nazareth who was passing through town. God's grace and mercy were already on this blind man because when he heard it was Jesus of Nazareth, he addresses Jesus in a term that recognized him as the Savior of the world. He calls him the Son of David. That's a term that was used throughout the Old Testament, especially in the Psalms, to describe both David's son and David's Lord. It was a messianic psalm. He recognized who this was. Lord, son of David, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. He may not have had much, but he knew who this Jesus of Nazareth was. He was David's son, he was David's Lord, and he was his Lord and Savior. He knew that no one else could help him in the situation that he had in his life. And so he cried out to Jesus for help. And no one was going to stop him, even though they tried. That cry for mercy from the Lord is a cry that has echoed from believers <coughs> in the triune God since the beginning of time. The Psalms are filled with the cries of, of people who are down and out looking to the Lord for help. To you I call the Lord my rock. Do not turn a deaf ear for, to me, for if you remain silent, I will be like those who have gone down to the pit. Hear my cry for mercy as I call to you for help, as I lift up my hands toward your most holy place. The psalmist cries out for help from, from the Lord, and that call continues to ring out from the hearts and from the mouths of believers throughout the ages, even to today. It's because the Lord has mercy on us as we cry out to Him for help. You see, when we cry out to the Lord, we are looking for that help, and we are looking for that aid. That's one of the reasons why we have people around us in our lives as well, right? We call to loved ones for assistance in time to aid. So if you have, a tr have trouble, you call on family or friends to help you out. We look to each other. Right, to help out with the project, to get us out of a bind, to rescue us from a potential disaster. Right, the, the call went out this over the last several weeks. Right, to come and help us down in, in Florida. Help, help with the disaster cleanup. Husbands and wives. That's, that's one of the reasons why the Lord has brought you together. We just studied that in, in our, our Bible study this morning. Right, that that one flesh concept. Right, the, the two become one. Right, it's a it's a unit concept, and so. That means you are each other's helpers. You don't hesitate to call on your spouse for help. Kids, that's why you've got parents. Right? They're there to help you and to assist you when you need that, that help in your lives. And maybe it's help with a math problem. Maybe it's, it's help with, with a problem that you're having at school. Maybe it's something with, with friends. And it doesn't matter how young or how old you are. Right? It's always great to be able to go to mom or dad for that assistance. But how quick are we to turn to the Lord for that help and that assistance? Listen again to the example that this blind man gives in our lesson. Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they called to the blind man, cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet. Friends, are we like Bartimaeus, throwing everything to the side and, and rushing to Jesus when we need that help and that assistance in our lives? <clears throat> or do we just wait until the big stuff comes up and say, you know what, the little stuff I'll just handle myself? Or do we figure I'm just, I'm just carrying too much baggage to come?
come to come to God does that slow us down and make us stop? Does our sinful, selfish pride get in the way and say, you know what? I'll, I'll handle it myself. Like the toddler who doesn't want mom's, mom and dad's help to tie their shoes. And then not only do their, their shoes not tie right, but they're on the wrong feet. There's so much that gets in the way, right? Maybe we think, well, I've got my life together pretty well. I'll let Jesus take care of the people whose lives are messes. My life isn't as bad as other people. Does our anger flare up against the ones that we love or against our brothers and sisters in Christ? Then as we heard last week in our, in our Bible study, we're guilty of murder. Do our eyes tend to wander to people who are not our spouse? Then, as we heard in our Bible study this morning, we've committed adultery. Suddenly the picture of this life that we have that seems to be all together isn't so rosy. Suddenly the, the need for the Lord to come to our aid and have mercy on us is bigger than we ever imagined. Kyrie, Eleazar, Lord, have mercy. And that's exactly why the Son of God entered into this world and became one. He took our place. The mercy and the love that he has for us is an endless. That's why he lived in this life on this earth entirely free from the guilt of any sin. That's why everything Jesus said, everything Jesus did, everything he thought was pure and holy. Because we're not. That is why Jesus stepped up willingly to the cross and shed his perfect blood and laid down his innocent life. We heard it in our second lesson. Although he's a son, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Jesus is the source. Jesus is the giver of every blessing that we so desperately need. Forgiveness of every one of our sins. Having peace with God right here, right now. And having a 100% certain hope of eternal life with our God in heaven. Blind Bartimaeus was bold. He persisted in his cries for help, and no one was going to stop him. And when Jesus finally summoned him, he leaped to his feet and went to Jesus. He recognized his Savior for who he was, David's son, David's Lord, his master, his rabbi, his Savior. His request for sight was couched in that humble language of faith as he believed in Jesus' blessings and his ability to help him through that trouble. Rabbi, I want to see. Jesus heard that request. God's grace and God's mercy fell upon Bartimaeus as he received his sight. Because Jesus not only gave him the faith to trust him in his, as his Savior and with the ability to heal him from his blindness. Jesus then also turned around and praised him for that very faith that trusted in Jesus. Go. Your faith has healed you. The object of his faith was Jesus. And the mercy of Jesus was the cause of his, of his healing. Bartimaeus' trust in his Savior was the receiving hand of God's love and grace and mercy the blessings that followed as a result of that. The Lord has mercy on us. So believe in those blessings that he has. And you see that the faith and the trust that God, the Holy Spirit, gave to Bartimaeus in Jesus was not put to shame. There was no delay. Immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Healing that he received gave this man such joy that he just couldn't contain it. In love and gratitude, he followed Jesus along that road. And as I mentioned a few moments ago, that road was leading up to Jerusalem. 
was leading to the curse of the cross at Calvary. But it didn't stop there. That road also then continued to the glory of the empty tomb. To assure Bartimaeus and to assure us that what Jesus did for us is complete. God the Father has accepted that payment. And because of that, we have promise of eternal life in heaven and heaven. He eagerly followed his merciful Lord. God has given us every reason to thank and to praise Him in our lives as well, as we follow Him along the road. We follow Jesus along the road in His Word, as we gather together on a regular basis around Word and Sacrament, to study His Word together, to praise Him together in worship. We follow Him as, as now God gives us all of these different resources of, of talents and, and gifts and finances to be able to wrap our heads around serving the Lord together. As we do so, we give glory to the one and our only Savior from sin. In doing so, we actually then become God's ambassadors of mercy. That's happening right now as we continue to give that support in the, the door offerings that we're giving to, to the help with the, the hurricane relief. It happened this last week as a group from our own Lamb of God family went down to, to help with the cleanup. It also happened as those of you who were not able to go down with us made sure that the ministry at Lamb of God continued while we weren't able to be here. It happens as you serve your families each and every day. It happens as we share the love and the life of Jesus and the mercy of Jesus with those around us, whether it be family, neighbors, co-workers, even strangers. God reminds us that the light of the gospel of Jesus Christ is the only thing that can change people's lives. It is the mercy of God in action. Continue to use those opportunities to follow the Lord along that path as the Lord has mercy on us. Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy. What a beautiful display of trust and confidence in the promises of our gracious God and Savior. His words and His guarantees are always going to be good and true. That's because the Lord has mercy on us. So cry out for His help. Trust and cling to those blessings that he wants to give. And then follow him along the road, the path that he leads us, wherever that path goes. He assures us that he's going to be with us. He also assures us that we will never be disappointed, either here on this earth as we serve him, and especially when we join him in the joys and bliss of our eternal home in heaven. To that end, may God guide us his mercy rests upon us and as we continue to be ambassadors for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. And all we say to do in service to God and in service to God.